Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is uh, Pastor Ambrose, Brother Ambrose from Ambrose King Online Ministries where we give your life a lifting through the Word of God. I want to welcome you to today's uh, Bible study. And today I'm going to be talking about the doctrines of tithing. The doctrines of tithing. You know, there has been so many controversies and so many debates and so many discussions about tithing. And one of my followers told me, and as my, so many people told me that uh, they would like me to do a Bible study on tithing and um, to for us to look at what the Bible really teaches, you know, because um, there has been so many controversies. And the best thing to always do is to go to the Word of God to resolve any controversies and to look at the doctrines. You know, we you should not just follow people blindly because uh, whatever they are doing is popular. You should follow what God's Word says and follow what you know the Bible tells us to do. You have to understand that we are in the age of the church, in the age of grace, and what apply in the Old Testament may not necessarily apply to. Uh, those who are in the church age so the best thing is uh, to go into the bible and today we are going to allow the bible to speak irrespective of our teaching of uh, what we have been practicing sometimes you know people walk blindly but um, when god begins to open up your understanding then it's good for you to follow what the bible says and what god is saying so you should not be following blindly you should not be doing things because it's popular uh, because it's widely acceptable, but you have to find out is it acceptable in the eyes of God. You know, it is your responsibility to examine the scriptures and to do what God says in His Word and not follow a system of beliefs or a system of false beliefs and doctrines, no matter how popular and acceptable it is, no matter who is teaching it, no matter who is preaching it, you are not to accept what they say until you look at it and check it out in context and rightly divide the Word of God. We're going to examine, you know, it says, yeah, a lot of people always um, say that you are robbing God, you know, that you have robbed God. The question is, who is robbing God? And we're going to look at the scriptures. Is it those who pay tithes uh, in full or those who don't pay tithes in full or those who don't pay tithes or those who collect tithes and don't use it the way God has instructed? Those who collect tithes and don't give it to God. Are those the ones that are robbing God? So we're going to examine what the Bible says concerning tithe. And this is going to be interesting. You might be hearing things or seeing things that you never had before. Because a lot of us don't read the Bible. We just follow uh, an established doctrine and just follow it blindly. You know, uh, I'm not saying that you should be paying tithe. And I'm not saying you should not be paying tithe. So let the word of God speak to you. And you make up your decision what you want to do. Again, you are not to follow blindly you have to study the the Bible tells us to study the bible not just follow blindly not just do whatever people are doing because god has given every one of us a sound mind remember the bible tells us god has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind and one of the things about sound man is that you have to be question everyone you have to question everything don't just accept it question it and get answers based on the mind of god and you find the mind of god in the bible you know, so today we're going to look at the Bible as we do this Bible study. So just have your Bible with you, have an open mind, and let us look at the scriptures. You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible tells us to study. We should study to show ourselves approved. A workman who uh, is not ashamed and rightly dividing the word of truth. So you can't just take scriptures and apply it. You can't take scripture from the Old Testament and apply it in church. Age. You can't take any scripture and just apply it. You have to rightly divide it to whom this verse is written to, to which group and to which age. You see, we have three groups. We have uh, the Jews, we have the church, and we have the Gentiles. One, if you are not from Israel, you are a Gentile. If you are from Israel, you are a Jew. And if you are a Gentile, or you are saved, or you are a Jew, you are saved, then you belong to the church. So you have to know which group and which time. And we have several ages, several times, but the two primary uh, time frame is the Old Testament and New Testament. So you have to find out where you belong and which group. You know, so many of us have been walking in error in the past. It's time for us to repent, to make amends with God, and to do what is right. You know, remember what the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. He said, Many will say to me, Have we not cast out the devil in your name have we not prophesied in your name and jesus tells them you know i i, I don't know you you walk off with iniquity and uh, that's not something you want to hear you know so it is better for you to judge yourself while you are alive and make amends 
you know, we do it gradually or you do it instantaneously. The choice is yours. So join with me as we go into the scripture. Thank you and welcome. This is Ambrose King of Ambrose King Ministries. Glory to God. Uh, I'm going to read Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. A very popular scripture. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. It says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here which says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That is Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. That's a popular scripture that is read when you know people want to collect tithes. And um, you know, when they read it, it said that God said we should bring all the tithes into the storehouse. When you look at this verse, what is tight? What is tight? Well, we're going to allow the word of God to speak. When you look at a verse like this, you have to ask question. What is tight? It says, bring all the tight into the storehouse. The next question is, what is a storehouse? This seems to be controversial, but we examine the scriptures as we go on. You know, uh, but a storehouse is the storage building. It's a shed. It's like what they call in America, shed. It's not the main building. A store has a storage building that is attached to a main building to keep items. But we're going to allow the Bible to speak for us. Now, in, in this Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, who is God talking to? Which group of people and which time frame is, the, is God talking to? Let's look at another verse here. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 12. I hope you have your Bible with you. Let us reason together and you can put your comments. If you object to it, that's fine. Let us reason together. And at the end, we decide what God's word says and we allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 12, which is another popular verse that is used for collecting tithe. It says, will a man rob God? Question mark. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But ye say, Where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10, that's where we read before. He said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11, And I will rebuke the devourer for thy six, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, He said, And all nations shall call you blessed, blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Wow, this is a, you know, I've just read Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 12. Now, when you look at this verse, you have to question, you have to ask, who is robbing God? <laughs> I believe there are three groups of people here. There are those who pay tithes. There are also those who don't pay. And there are those who collect tithes. So who is robbing God? Is it those who pay tithes? Is it those who collect tithes from people? Is it those who don't pay tithes? So that's what we're going to try to examine. So we're going to allow the scriptures to speak for himself. Who is roaming God? Those who don't pay tithes or those who collect tithes and don't give it to God based on his instructions on tithes, but use it the way they want, or those who don't pay tithes at all. You know, let us look at the example of those who pay tithes. Abraham paid tithes before those questions are answered. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 17, 24, read the Bible, open your scriptures and look at it. Genesis chapter 14, verse 17 to 24. And I'll read. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Shedor Loma and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shave, which is the king's dale. Verse 18. And Mekizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, Abraham, and said, Blessed be Abraham, the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And Blessed, blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. See, Abraham paid tithes of all. However, he paid tithes from the spoils. He paid tithes, and it was voluntary. And that was pre-law. So Abraham did that voluntarily. But if you look at verse 18 of that Genesis chapter 14, the Bible tells us that 
Uh, Mekisedes gave Abraham bread and wine. So the priest entertained Abraham, gave him something, refreshed Abraham. Then Abraham gave tithes. Well, that's not the point here. Abraham gave from the spoils, not from his possessions. Now, let's look at when the tithe became law. I always ask, you have to find out, is the tithe pre-law or is it part of the law? It was pre-law and now it was made a law. So let's look at Leviticus 27 verse 30. Leviticus verse, uh, is the book of law. It's where the laws were written and Moses and for, um, brought, added that to the laws. No, it's not only Ten Commandments. There are so many other laws in the Old Testament. Leviticus 27 verse 30. It says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. When you look at this Leviticus 27 verse 30, tithe is not money here. It didn't talk about money. And there is nowhere in the Bible <clears throat> that tithe became money that need to be given to God. When you look at it, it says, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree. Hmm. Some people say, well, there was no money back then. But in Leviticus, you remember that they have already left Egypt and they, they were already they were using money. Remember that the, Israel, the Israelites went to Egypt to buy food and they gave Joseph money. So, so there was already money. But here in Leviticus 27 verse 30, it says, the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree. And when it says seed, it's not what we say. People are, are used to this thing. When they say seed, the seed is money. Basically, seed in the New Testament is the word of God. But here, seed is seed like corn. You have the seed that you plant. Whatever you plant on the soil is the seed. Now, let us look at the law of the tithe based on the word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22 to 26. So, tithe has become law. As we saw in Leviticus. But let's look at Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 26. It said, Thou, verse 22, it said, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. You see, now is the law. That the field bringeth forth year by year, and thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place where he shall chosen to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Verse 24 of Deuteronomy 14. And if the way, now this is very important, it's good for you to look at your Bible because you'll be hearing things that seem sound strange. In, in the same Deuteronomy verse, uh, chapter 14, when you look at um, verse 24, it says, And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, then the Lord thy God had blessed thee. Verse 25, Then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up thy money in thy hand, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after. That is verse 26. For oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, uh -oh. <laughs> or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thy household. Wow, and verse 27 of the same Deuteronomy 14. It says, And the Levite that is within thy gate, thou shalt not forsake him, for he had no part nor inheritance with thee. What a remarkable passage about the law of tithe and how tithe is to be used. Let's examine this scripture and analyze it. Number one, tithe is seeds. You are to eat your tithe according to this passage. How many of you are eating your tithe? Raise up your hands. <laughs> When you look at verse 23 of Deuteronomy, verse 14, which is the law of tithe. Verse 23 says, And thou shalt eat before thy Lord thy God in the place which he had chose to place his name there. So whether it's a church, synagogue, wherever, you eat your tithe there according to this passage. It didn't say you give it out. You eat it when you eat it. That is the instruction here. In verse 23, it says, Thou shalt eat before the Lord in the place which he has chosen to place his name there. It said, The tithe 
of thy corn. He didn't say the tithe of your income. <laughs> he said the tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thy oil, and the firstling of thy herds and of thy flock. Very specific or what you can be tied on. Ha ha ha. He didn't talk about money here. Hmm. In verse 25, as we examine the scripture and do the Bible study together. In verse 25. Now, he says, if the place that God has chosen for is too far, verse 25 says, then thou shalt turn it into money. That's the first time they bring the word money out for tithe. When money came, God says, when you are going to where God wants you to eat your tithe, if the place is too far, turn it into money. Take the money with you. Let's see what verse 25 says on Deuteronomy 24. See, a lot of people don't even read this. Some people read it, but they read it in passing and never understood it or, died, uh, or tried to uh, understand it. Verse 25 says, Then shalt thou turn it into money and bind it up the money in thy hand and shall go into the place which the Lord thy God has chosen. Look at what verse 26 says. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatever thy soul lost after. In other words, use that money and buy for whatever you like. <laughs> he even gave you an example. Oxen. Or for sheep, or for wine, <laughs> or for strong drink, booze. <laughs> Woo, but you know, they don't really teach us this or this one, you know, when they call it in time. Or for whatsoever that so desire, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice thou, thou and thy house. So, in other words, the money that you take to the synagogue, to the church, to the whatever, well, there's no church back then, wherever it is, you eat it there with that money. You don't drop the money on the altar. You use it to buy whatever you like and consume it. That's what the Bible says. I'm not the one. I didn't write the Bible. It's right there. You just have to read it and study it and see if that is what you are doing these days with your tithe. Oh, glory to God. Hmm. He said that you eat it there and you will rejoice. You rejoice that you eat your tithes and you and your household. <laughs> Verse 27, And the Levite that is within thy gate, thou shalt not forsake him, for he had no part. In other words, extend your tithes to the Levites. The Levite has no inheritance. They have no land. They have no houses. They have no business. They have no income. They are full-time priests. But these days, how many pastors are full-time and they don't have income, they don't have houses, they don't have land, they don't have business, they are just full-time, they don't have any inheritance. But by the way, this is New Testament, the Levites have been cancelled, we don't have Levites in the New Testament. So, that's what the Bible teaches and we're going to get there. Now, as we move, take this one step further, what is tight? Tight is 10% of your produce. Not money, but it could be money. 10% of your produce. Somebody will say, is it gross or is it net? Well, it's what is yours. Most of the time, gross doesn't belong to you. So, it depends on how you look at it. It's of your produce, what is yours? Now, remember in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, what is storehouse? What is storehouse? Is it the church? Synagogue? Or... What is the storehouse? It says, Malachi 3 10, say, Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here with, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be no room enough to receive it. So, what is a storehouse? Is it a church? Is it a house of God? Is it a temple? Is it a synagogue? Well, when you look at the scriptures, you know, um, storehouse. It's a storage where food are kept for distribution. The storehouse is not necessarily a church, and most of the time it's not a church. Tithe is not money, but it could be money. Tithe is produce of work. Tithe was established before the book of Malachi, written. Before the book of Malachi, Tithe was written. So we have to go back to the books before Malachi and find out what storehouses are. You see, as I said before, a storehouse is a story place and not a church building. It is like a warehouse built by the built to keep house items for storage let's look at an example of storehouses in the bible again what is a storehouse is it a church is it a synagogue is it <laughs> it is a storage place to keep items food produce or whatever 
Let us look at Genesis chapter 41 and verse 56. You know, part of my research was based on, you know, uh, teaching from my mentors and also reading the Bible. And this is what I put together that I'm sharing with you. In Genesis chapter 41 and verse 6, it says, And the family, you know, Joseph was in Egypt. So Joseph built storehouses in Egypt. So in Egypt, they don't serve God. They don't know God. They are pagans. So did Joseph build church or synagogue in Egypt? Look at what the Bible says. Genesis 4, 12, 56, and the fam and the family was over all the place of the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. Joseph built storehouses, he did not build churches, he did not build synagogues, he did not build temples, he built storehouses to keep food because of the famine. Remember the dream that he had before. And, and when he became the prime minister, he, he ordered that storehouses be built so they can store houses for the next seven years of farming. So Joseph built storehouses. He didn't build temples or synagogues in Egypt. The heathen in Egypt don't believe in God. So Joseph did not build temples for them to worship. All right. When you go to Second Chronicles chapter 32 also, verse 27 to 28, so we're trying to define what is storehouse. The Bible says, and Second Chronicles chapter 32, verse 27 to 28, it says, And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor, and he made himself treasuries for silver, and for gold, and for precious stones, and for spices, and for shields, and for all manner of pleasant jewels. Verse 28, he built storehouses also for the increase of corn, and wine and oil and stores for all manner of beasts and coats for flocks. Moreover, he provided him cities, possession of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him substance very much. So Hezekiah built, he's a king, he built storehouses to keep what? <laughs> Corn, wine, oil, and all manners of things. He kept them in there. So that was not a temple. Now let's move one step further quickly. In Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 36, in Nehemiah chapter 10, 36, also the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle, as it is written in the law, and the firstling of our herds and of our flock to bring to the house of, of our God unto the priest that minister in the house of our God. So many storehouses were built. Nehemiah did not build temples. He brought them into the storehouse where they are being distributed. In Deuteronomy 28, 8, quickly, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So individuals built storehouses. They didn't build temples. So um, you can see that from the Bible, storehouses is not a temple. It's not a place of worship. It's a place of storage. Of course, in a place of temple, the storehouse can be built a part of it, a portion of the temple or church, if you want to put it that way. So when you bring to the storehouse, it is to put it in a storage where it can be distributed for the members to eat. Let's look at examples of those who pay tithes in the Bible. Again, we'll first of all look at Abraham. Well, the first one again is Genesis chapter 14, verse 20. Abraham paid tithes. And verse 20 of Genesis 14 it says, And blessed be the most high God who had delivered thy enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Abraham only paid tithes on all from the spoils, not from all his possessions, not from his income. It's what he took when he went to war. From the spoils that was where he paid tithes. Number two, let's look at in Matthew chapter 23, uh, verse 23 to 24. The Pharisees and Sadducees were paying tithes, and Jesus talked to them. Remember, Jesus ministered under the Old Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were still part of the Old Testament. The New Testament did not start until Jesus died and he rose up because the New Testament cannot be rectified until the death of the testator. Jesus was the testator. He had to die first. And until he died, the New Testament could not start. So we are in the New Testament. So we are looking at the scriptures to find out also whether Christians should be paying tithes or not. So let's let the Bible speak for himself. All right. In... See how Jesus even addressed those who pay tithe in Matthew 23, verse 23 to 24. Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anins and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. 
This ought ye to have done, and not to ha- leave the other undone. Ye blind gates, ye blind guides, which strain a gnat and swallow a camel. <laughs> Jesus was really rebuking the Pharisees. They were the one paying tight. Jesus was not commending them. He said, woe, what is woe? He was rebuking them. And when we look at these scriptures, <coughs> uh, what is comp- the, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were paying a tight. Um, according to Jesus, verse 22, one to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tight on mint. So they were paying tight on mint. Um, and anise. They were paying tight on anise and cumin. So they were paying tight on three items. They were not paying from their income, it was from their produce. Again, the scripture has showed that tight is composed of produce. No money, according to the Bible. You are not paying tight as money, it's for your produce. Produce. Nowhere was it written in the Bible that tight was turned into money and taken to the storehouse. There was nowhere tight was changed to money and now taken to storehouse. Either in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. So let's just follow the Bible. This is just Bible study, examine the scripture. So having done that, who is the tight meant for? <laughs> so the best place to do to the best thing to do is to go to the scriptures. Read the scriptures for yourself. Well, the tithes, number one, are to go to the Levites. 10% of the tithe go to Levites because they have no inheritance. They have no jobs. They have no business. They have no houses. They have no land. They have nothing. They are full-time priests. But today, most pastors have their own business. They have their own houses. They have their cars. They have jobs. They have, you know, they are working. So they don't qualify for being a Levite for New Testament time, according to the Bible. They have properties, they have things, but Levites don't have nothing, nothing, and they are few. Number two, tithes is meant for foreigners, uh, the strangers. We're going to let the Bible, we're going to examine the scriptures. And number three, tithes is for the fatherless and for the widows. And of course, for you, the one who ate your tithes, according to the scriptures. Let's go to the Bible. Uh, who are the categories to whom tithe should go be given? Who, who should tithe be given to? Let's go to Deuteronomy verse chapter 14 again. Because you have to look at the scriptures and follow the instructions. And that's the only way you can be blessed. If you do it your own way according to doctrine, you may not see your blessing. Only one person will be blessed. And we know who the person is. So Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 22 to 29. It said, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. I hope you're looking at your scriptures. <laughs> And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, thy, of thy wine, and of thy oil, and of the firstling of thy herds, and of, the, of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God has blessed thee, verse 25, Deuteronomy 14 says, Then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thy hand, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thy household. Verse 27 of Deuteronomy 14, And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he had no part or inheritance within thee. Here, he talks about tithes to you and to the Levite. You eat your tithes according to this scripture. This day when you say you eat your tithes, it's like a curse. But the Bible clearly says you should. How many of you are eating your tithes? <laughs> ah, 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 ah. So, let us take it one step further. In the same Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 28, they're going to look at the categories of those who, when you collect tithe, who should, what should you do with that tithe? Should you use to pay your mortgage, pay your bills, pay, buy private jet, pay for luxury, travel? Um, let's see what the Bible says. In verse 28 of the same Deuteronomy 14, you know, remember, there's no more Levites in the New Testament. So, tithes, based on that, is for you alone. 
according to that verse, so don't, don't, just what the Bible says. In verse 28, at the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thy increase. The same year, and shall lay it up within thy gates. Verse 29, very important, of that same Deuteronomy, that we read, Deuteronomy 14, verse 29, and the Levite, because he had no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within thy gate, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hand, which thou doest. The only condition where you'll be so blessed for tithing is when you follow this instruction. If you deviate it, do it for something else. <laughs> but God says that, that the Lord thy God may bless thee. Look at that verse 29 again, and I'm going to read it of uh, the same Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 29. He said, and he first of all talk about you eating up your tithes. Then he said, and the Levite. So he now give tithe to Levite, part of the tithe to the Levite. But now in the New Testament, time that we're living in, there's no Levite. Okay. And the pastors don't qualify to be a Levite because the pastors have their business, they have their land, they have their houses, they have their own. Okay. And most of them are not full time. And astronaut and the Levite, because he had no part nor inheritance with thee. And the stranger, you see, so it's talking about stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come and eat and be satisfied that 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 the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hand, which thou doest. Until you do it like this. God does, according to his word, I mean, he said this is what you should do so that God will bless you. You eat it, you should give it to the stranger, you should give it to the widow, you should give it to the orphan. And when you do that, then God will bless you when you give your tithes. That's what he says. So, when you examine this verse 29 of uh, uh, Deuteronomy um, 14, very critical, very important. This is God's instruction. He has not changed it if you are paying tithes. He did not change it and he has not changed it. He said, I am the Lord like God. I change it not. He has not changed it. There's no way in the Bible that God canceled this and changed it until after Jesus Christ came and the New Testament. And the rule for New Testament is changed. So for those of you who still want to obey the old rules, it's better for you to do it the old way. Even though I don't recommend it and I'll tell you why. Now, number one, you collect tithes. You don't collect tithes from widows. You don't collect tithes from fatherless. You don't collect tithes from strangers. You don't collect tithes from Levites, but rather you give to them tithes. Let me repeat that again according to the scripture. I'm always talking the Bible. We are doing Bible study. If you disagree, that's fine. Just put your comment and we will reason together. We can disagree to agree. This is the instruction of tithe. This is the law. And if you are not following this law, you are breaking the law. And you are not being blessed. You are robbing God. He said, and the Levites, verse 29 Deuteronomy 14, and the Levite, because he had no part, no inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come and shall eat the tithe and be satisfied that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hand, which thou doest. Read it for yourself. Check it out. Read it in different translation. See? <laughs> God bless you when you follow this order, verse 29. He blesses you in the Old Testament time when you follow this order. When you pay your tithe, you do this with your tithe, that's when you get blessed. That's where he rebukes the devourer, according to the scripture. Again, it's not according to my own doctrine. I don't have any doctrine. I only follow the Bible. I am a Bible believer. I am not a Pentecostal. I am not a charismatic. No, I am not a Catholic. Not a Jehovah witness, but a Bible believer. Glory to God. A Bible believer accept what the God, what God says final and follow it. In verse 26, you are of the three fourteen. You are to eat your tithe. According to verse four, uh, verse 26, 40. Read it yourself. God has not changed it. In Deuteronomy 14, 22, 29, tithe is produce, not money. It doesn't include fish. So tithe is produce. You can convert tithe to money only when you are traveling. And where you want to go and eat it, it's too far. You convert it to money. And when you get to where you're going, use that money to buy what you want, <laughs> including <laughs> beer and strong drink. Am I recommending for you to drink it? No. But the Bible says you should do it. Go ahead and read it yourself. 
And now in the New Testament, the Levites have been canceled, so they don't get tight. So the tithe now goes to the strangers, to the um, orphans, and to the widows. And of course, for you. Let us take it one step further. In Deuteronomy 26, verse 12, for those of you just watching, we're talking about the doctrine of tithe. This is very interesting. So make sure you have your Bible. Read your Bible with your own eyes. Ask God question and understand it. Take notes. Write the scriptures down and read it over and over. In Deuteronomy 26, verse 12, you see, you don't give all the tithe to the church. It must be used according to God's instruction. That was no blessing. Oh, that was no blessing for you paying, for you collecting. Only 10% of tithe should go to the Levites. If you can find one in New Testament time, you cannot find one. There are no Levites in the New Testament times right now. Let us look at Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 12 to 13. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 12 to 13. It says, When thou hast made an end of tithing, all the tithes of thy increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and has given it unto the Levites, number one, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widows, that they may eat within thy gates. That's what the word of God is saying again. How many of you are following these instructions? <laughs> Verse 13, Deuteronomy 26. Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hollow things out of my hands, my house, and also have given it unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, and to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments, which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. See, that is the Old Testament. So it tells you exactly what to do with your tithe, how to do tithe. Are you following that order? It says that's the only way you can be blessed. I'm not the one who wrote the Bible, so go ahead and read the Bible for yourself. So how do you give to God? How do you give your tithe to God? It's telling you, give it to the fatherless, give it to widows, give it to strangers, give it to Levites, and you eat it. And praise him and say, I've taken the hallowed thing. This is what belongs to you. I've given it out to you. I'll give it to you. But this day, when they say give your tithe, they put their account numbers. And the tithe doesn't go to God directly. So whoever is collecting the tithe has not become God. Give it to God. So, but you put your account number and you are the one spending it the way you want, not following this particular order. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 12 to 13. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 12 to 13. Once again, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 12 to 13. God has not changed this. All right. Also understand that the Levites, are, it's not the same thing as pastors. I'm a pastor as well, but the Levites, they don't exist anymore because we don't have Levites. So we have to follow these instructions. This is what God says. The Levites, the fatherless, the orphans, and the widows. You give to Levites 10% of the tithe. Not all. Give to the Levite 10% of the tithe. Not all. <laughs> and it was only in the Old Testament and not no longer in the New Testament. It doesn't apply. Number two, God was always mindful of these categories of people on earth. The fatherless, the orphans, and the strangers. He wants you all to take care of them. And God wants to take care of them. You know, the woman, the widows are those who have lost their husbands. Especially those in the villages. Those who don't have. That's what the tithe is used for. Your grandmother, your mother, your great-grandmother. <laughs> of course, I know that some men lost their wives and they're still widows. All right, let's see tithe in the New Testament. As I said, it was mentioned vaguely by Jesus. Jesus never collected tithe. The apostles never collected tithe. They never paid tithe. Jesus did not pay tithe. There was no record of Jesus paying tithe. In Matthew 23, 23, it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. This ought ye to have done and not leave the other undone. So he's not telling them not to pay tithe. But when you pay tithe, do it based on what God says, how he says it, if you are to pay tithes. Jesus called them woes. He was not praising them. <laughs> because, well, they thought that when they pay tithe, they have done everything, so they deserve everything. They are not doing the weightier matters. Jesus was talking about the weightier matters. So in the New Testament, we have to concentrate on the weightier matters. And let's see what happened to tithe in the New Testament time. Okay, The Bible is going to speak for himself. Jesus called them woes. He wasn't praising them. They paid tithe on mint, anise, and cumin. They weren't paying money as tithe. You see, Jesus told them they should be doing the weightier matter. So in the mind of Christ, in the New Testament times, we are believers. We are born again, children of God, follower of Christ. We have to do the weightier matter. That's what matters to God, not tithe. 
according to the scripture. Jesus was still ministering in Old Testament because New Testament has not started. New Testament started after Jesus died and resurrected. Until the death of the testator, the testament cannot be enforced. So the New Testament started in Acts. Now, how did they give in the early churches? Let's look at how New Testament, are we, are New Testament, are we to double tight? Let's see how they gave in the early churches. Let's see how Apostle Peter did. They collect tithe. Did they tell them to collect tithe? Let's see. The best good place to go to is Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 23. I trust, I trust that this issue has been a blessing. You know, sometimes when you hear this message, sometimes it prick your heart. You are angry. You think that somebody is trying to expose you. Well, I always believe that it's good for us to judge ourselves now. And don't wait for God to judge us down the road. Because everyone, whatever we do, we must stand. Before God, we must stand in the judgment seat of Christ to give account of what we did in our body. It is better for you to repent, ask God for forgiveness. If you have not been following this order, if you have been using a tithe, even though you are using to for for <laughs> for, for the so-called his work, but you are not following his instructions. You have to follow his instructions. If you don't follow it, you are disobeying him, you are rebellious, and of course, you are sinning. I always tell people sin is not only adultery and fornication. If you don't do what God says in his word, he calls you evil. He says you are sinning. And I pray that as many that will read this, that will get this video, that it will touch you. And if you have been doing the wrong way, that you will repent and you cry to God for forgiveness. You know, I believe that eternity is priceless. And we should not let, you know, anything on this earth to deprive us of eternity. Look at what Jesus said. He said, oh, he said what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? He said, to gain the whole world and... so." Once you gain the whole world, this is where you get your reward. When you scam people out of money, properties, everything, that's your reward. Jesus said, and lose hope your soul. So it's just conjunction. When you do one thing, the other one automatically follows. And that's why I'm, you know, I decided to do this teaching for my followers and for myself also. You know, I personally don't collect tithes. <laughs> I've never collected tithes. I've passed for a long time. Wow. So, in New Testament, what do we do? We're in the New Testament time. We're not in the Old Testament. We are not following the throne. We are not following that. But at the same time, we are, God did not change it. In New Testament, this is what they did. In Acts chapter 4, I'm going to read 32 to 27, 27 very quickly. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. And verse 33, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For us many, as many as were possessors of lands or houses, sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. This is a very macro passage. This is the principle of the New Testament. I love this. But how many people are following this? Let us analyze this passage. When you look at Acts chapter 4, verse 30, 43 to 35, you see, money. <laughs> oh, dear Jesus. When you look at Acts chapter 4, and when you look at uh, the same 33 to 35, Money was collected from those who possessed lands and houses, and they were distributed to each other. It was not collected by one person, either the pastor, the geo, the bishop, the archbishop. It was not collected by one person for the empire building. After collection, in that same verse, in verse 35, it says, And distribution was made unto every man according to as he had need. So they brought to the Apostles, they collected and they now distributed to everyone. So how many people are practicing that when they collect seeds, when they bring money, when they bring offering? How many churches are practicing that? Raise up your hand. Wow. He said, and distribution was made. It's as if they have removed that part. It's as if that part has been removed. He <laughs> said, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had needs. Can you imagine? On a Sunday, they bring seed, they bring tithe, they bring offering. Then after service, they now distribute the same tithe, the same offering to everyone that has a need. I don't know. I have not seen any church do that, but maybe some churches are doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm not condemning anything. I'm just following what the Bible says. We are Bible believers. You know, so. Uh, 
<laughs> when you look at verse 35, actually, of that same verse, in verse 33, the Bible says, And with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. How can you have great grace? You do great grace when you do things God's way, and you have great grace. Miracles will be happening. But these days, how many are walking in that power? How many of the people are walking in that great grace? I mean, I, I just don't know. Anyway, let's quickly move forward. So, who is robbing God? We asked that question before. Who is robbing God? We have to answer the question. Don't be shame. Don't be ashamed. Don't be shy. Answer the question. And, of course, if you have questions, ask, ask, ask. Who is robbing God? Those who are collecting tithes and noise using it as directed are the ones robbing God. From reading the scriptures, when you collect tithes, you already told you what to do with tithes. Tight, you are to eat your tight, or you give it to the Levites, you give it to strangers, you give it to orphans, you give it to widows, and they will eat and praise God. So that's how you give to God. That's how you give your tight to God. So if you are not doing that, if you collect it and you deviate it, you use it for something else, then you are not following the instructions. And that's what the Bible teaches. That's not my opinion. So those who are collecting tithes are not using it as directly as the one robbing God in that verse. It's, now, let's prove it. Let's go to the same Malachi chapter 3. Let's go to verse 5. See, most times we, we don't hear verse 5. It says, and I will come near to you to judge me. And I will, be a, a swift, I will be swift against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the harling in his wages, the widow, and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his rights, and fear not me, said the Lord of hosts. So, those who don't give to the fatherless, the strangers, and, 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 and you know, according to God has instructed, that's where it started. That is the context of Malachi uh, chapter 3, where it says, uh, You have robbed me. So, who is robbing God? It's very important to examine. It's those who collect the tithes and mm, don't use it the way God says. That's what the scripture says. We are just following the Bible. You know, when I first saw this, I repented. I cried well before God. I repented. I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. I have taught wrong. I taught other people. Even though I never collected tithes, I always teach that they should bring. And I always <laughs> leave this portion. But it's up to you whether you want to repent or you want to go into do things the way you normally want to do or follow doctrine, follow man's tradition. See? When you stand before God, I won't be there. When I stand before God, you won't be there. And for those of you who are members who are still following the same way, you still will be judged based on what you did. So, you know, it's up to you to decide what to do. I'm not saying pay. I'm not saying don't pay tight. So, you make the judgment. So, let's take this further. Glory to God. Well, well, well. Should you pay tight in the New Testament? You see? Tithe is one of the Old Testament laws. Do we agree that it's an Old Testament law? You have to settle that. Yes, because you saw it in Levi, the book of Leviticus, and you saw it in the book of Deuteronomy. So it was part of the law. It was pre-law, and it was part of the law. So what do you do now in the New Testament? Again, let's go to the Bible. Tithe is one of the Old Testament laws. Some say Mechizedek collected tithe from Abraham, but so it was pre Pre, pre law. Well, that's true, but then again, <clears throat> but tithe was included in the law. So it became law. So it's law. Let us go to see what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. It says, For as many as of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Curses everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. See, this is a law, this is a principle. So if you think that you want to be paying tithe, you want to be obeying the Old Testament law, if you take one of the laws of over 600 laws, you only take one because it's beneficial and you forget about the rest. There are so many other laws, terrible laws about sacrifice, about blood, about that. If you say you're not doing that, that is not nasty, but you want to take this one. The Bible says for as many as of the works of the law. So any of the law, any part of the law that you want to do in the New Testament, say you're under a curse. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written, curse is everyone who does not continue in all. Somebody say all, all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So you cannot selectively do the Old Testament laws. Let's take it one step further in Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. Very important. Galatians, I hope you are taking notes. Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. It says, You have been, 
you have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Oh my God. I wish a lot of people know this. I wish a lot of people follow this scripture. No matter how nice you are, no matter how, how your zeal is for the things of God, no matter how you love God, you have to follow principles. You have to follow the rules. You have to follow the law. Otherwise, you can put yourself on that course. You can even cut yourself off from Christ without you knowing just because you love him. And he's still going to judge you based on his words. No, So it's very important. Look at that. Galatians chapter 5 verse 4. It says, you have been estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified from the Lord. You know what that means? That means you have been removed from Christ. And without Christ, without his grace upon you, how can you make it to heaven? You'll be under curse. You'll be rebuked according to the scripture. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law. When you be, say you are being justified, I pay my tithe. My tithe is working for me. I pay tithe. I pay tithe. That's the law. You are always telling people, I pay, I pay, I pay, I pay. You say you are, <laughs> you have become estranged from Christ. So Christ is no longer the one that is helping you. It's your Old Testament law that you are following, that you are practicing. When the Old Testament law has been abolished by Christ, he died on the cross. He shed his blood. When he shed the blood, you know what Jesus did on that cross? You are making it of no effect. When Jesus said, it is finished, you are still saying, no, it's not finished. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on us. He said, you have become estranged from Christ. You will attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen. You are. It is that you are going to. You are falling from grace. That's what the Bible teaches, and that's what I follow, and that's what I teach. I represent the kingdom of heaven on earth because we are ambassadors. You represent the kingdom of heaven. If you don't do what Jesus said, Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Are you obeying what Jesus said? You see, revelation is progressive, and we have to rightfully divide the word of truth. So, what is my perspective? Well, I put a few notes here. In New Testament, believers are not required to pay tithes or compel or to be cajoled or to be manipulated to pay tithes. They should, they can, you are not required, according to what we just read. You see, there are, there are churches who discriminate because you don't pay tithe. Because you don't pay tithe, they won't help you. They won't, because you don't pay tithe, if you have problems, challenges, they won't pray, they won't answer a call. Those who pay tithe are given a preferential treatment. They are given position. They are trusted with authority. They, are, they sit in higher t chair. You see, that's the opposite of what God said we should do. We are not to give preference to people based on what they give. As the he said that, let your right hand not know what your left hand give. Let your left hand not know what your right hand give. And anyway, that is the word of God. You know, in the New Testament, looking at this scripture, especially those two scriptures, you are, New Testament believers are not required to pay tithe. That, that's just my perspective. And I stand to be correct. If you think I'm wrong, go ahead and send me a message and put your comments. Let us discuss. And I will do this video if I'm wrong. And I will come up publicly and say I'm wrong. And if you know you are wrong, I hope you will come up publicly and say you are wrong and stop um, putting people under curses according to the Bible. You know, <clears throat> God is not collecting money from the poor, rather collecting money for the poor. He's collecting money for the widows, for the orphans, for the strangers. And also, <laughs> he pay tithes for you to eat according to the Old Testament. So, um, when you look at Malachi chapter 3 verse 5, say, I will come near to you to you judgment and I'll be swift. He talks about how those who are robbing him, how he's going to deal with them. Do you want God to deal with you as, as he said in Malachi chapter 3 verse 5? I don't think so. So, um, it is very important for us to follow this, the, the rules and follow the principles because he's still going to judge us based on the word. We are no longer in the Old Testament. This is the church age. This is New Testament age. We have to follow the law of giving. There's a principle of giving in the New Testament. And uh, there's another video that I'm going to do that's going to address giving in the New Testament. Uh, I know some of us have churches, we have buildings. How do you um, get the funds to manage your church, pay your staff, do your programs? The Bible also talks about it. And, and, and there's a rule on giving in the new testament 
you know, let me just highlight one of the rules in First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 to 2. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 to 2. It says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no guidance when I come. So if you look at that verse, it talks about collection for the saints. So when you collect in the New Testament, you collect for the saints. And of course, um, you can use that to do whatever you want to do. Um, not cajoling people, telling them if they if they don't pay tithe, they're under curse. If they don't pay tithe, they will not go to heaven. There was a church I used to attend before before I transferred, and um, the pastor was saying that if you don't pay tithe, you're a bastard. He was cursing people. I mean, people have to. <laughs> hey, remember, we have to give account to to God. We have to give account. We have to give account. We have to give account. How do you give in the New Testament times? Watch out for the video coming. Uh, very soon and um, you know um, giving in the New Testament is very different from giving in the Old Testament so if you are still enforcing payment of tithes if you are still collecting tithes I just want you to understand the error that you're falling into if you are still enforcing it you know I'm not here to judge to condemn but um, the Bible tells us to judge those who are inside so we are to judge ourselves so you will be judged you know, people also collect first fruits. First fruit, first fruit is not required in the New Testament. If you collect first fruit from anyone in the New Testament, collecting the first month salary, hey, that is a big judgment coming to you. And for those of you who are paying first fruit, it has no eternal benefits. Yes, in the Old Testament, say honor the Lord with the first fruit of the increase. But when you look at First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse twenty, it says, "But now in Christ." risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. Jesus are first fruits. First fruits have been abolished in New Testament. And again, there are so many, some people still practicing it. I'm not saying you should practice it and you should not practice it. The question is, are you following the Bible or are you following doctrines? Are you following the Bible or are you following doctrines? I trust that this short video has been a blessing to you. And um, this is the law of Titan, the rules of Titan, which I just want to do a Bible study. If you have any question, please feel free to send it to me and we will examine together. Remember, the Bible tells us that we cannot serve God and mammon. We cannot. You cannot serve God and mammon. You know, Jesus said it. He said, no man can serve two masters. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, you cannot serve God and mammon. So maybe we have unknowingly crossed over to mammon without knowing. So I pray that this message will be a blessing to you. Feel free to comment. Feel free to send me a message. Feel free to teach me tights. In case I miss out on any. I'm still learning. But the ones that I've known is what I'm sharing. So uh, go ahead and um, share, like, comment, or post any notes. And um, we'll, in another video, we're going to talk about giving in the New Testament. Of course, even when you give in the New Testament, it's more than 20%, uh, 10% or 20%. What it's according to you have, according to you want, how, 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 how you have, uh, uh, you know, proposed in your mind. So it's my prayer that you will obey the word of God, abide by the words of God, especially in the New Testament. You will do Testament times rules, Testament times principles, because we are not in the Old Testament. So again, God bless you. Thank you for taking time to watch with me and fellowship with me. So uh, remember that you are always loved. But Jesus made it possible because he has set you free. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So be free so that when you meet Jesus, he will not rebuke you. He will say, welcome, my son, for faithful work. And he will give you a reward. God bless you. And I will see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.